Na, while uh, my review on the Brazil Belgium game is uploading, let's preview Sweden versus England, which will be played tomorrow, July 7th, in Samara, the Cosmos Stadium, which is kind of a very futuristic arena, but they all are in a way. And it's a 5 o'clock Moscow time, 4 o'clock Central European time, which makes it 10 o'clock on the East Coast in America. Sweden, England. Um, to me, since I've been watching soccer um, more seriously, let's say since 1990, since 1990 World Cup, that's a matchup that I have a lot of memories on. But when you look at all the competitive matches, the history really starts in 1988. Overall, it goes back a lot further, and it's amazing how tight the two nations are. I think at the moment they have an absolutely equal record with England just being ahead by two goals overall. And if you look at this record here in the World Cup qualifier for the 1990 World Cup, they played two uh, goalless draws in London and Solna, which is close to Stockholm, where the draws on the stadium. Uh, was, we have to say, now it's the Friends Arena uh, replaced, which is of course a very nice modern arena. The first Sweden-England match I saw was the one at the uh, Euro 92 in Sweden, where Sweden came back from an uh, early one-goal deficit by David Platt. I think Brolin and Dahlin scored, scored the two goals and actually secured Sweden going on which was considered a surprise at the moment. I mean, that was a group that had Sweden-Denmark who moved on, and France and England, who were actually favored. Um, the form continued for the qualifying for the Euro 2000, where Sweden actually was more of a disappointing team, but yeah, they managed to finish ahead of uh, England again in the qualification group. Now I lost, ah, here's my cursor. Uh, so they won again in Solna, 2-1, and then a goalless draw in London. So you see there's already a pattern emerging. Now the one that I remember, I don't want to say most fondly, but this was um, the big memory I had of the 2002 World Cup as the game with the best atmosphere, Saitama, England versus Sweden, uh, two European nations, and it was, it really sounded like a soccer game in a great stadium, and it was a pretty good soccer game uh, overall. I'm not so sure about uh, the scoring. I, I only know that I think Sol Campbell scored the goal for England and probably Sweden came back uh, to tie it. That's, I think, how the game went. It was also remarkable Sweden playing in blue and I loved the blue uniforms back then and England playing in white with all the others. I think the one in, in the year, year 92, Sweden and England both played in their home uniforms. I don't know about the qualification matchups. Now, the one that I most fondly remember is the one four years later. Again, last group game, it was uh, basically everything was decided. It was only who will go in first and second place. Second place will play Germany, which is the tougher matchup. And Sweden needed a win because they had uh, only tied against Trinidad, whereas England won. And yeah, uh, it was an exciting game with Sweden taking twice the lead and England twice equalizing, and the last equalizer, I think, by Joe Cole, if I'm not completely mistaken, was a wonderful uh, goal. Uh, I think he stopped it with his chest and then smashed it in a parabola into the English corner. Um, it was a great game. Uh, England finished second. I think Michael Owen was severely injured in that one, which was a bit of a big damper. Uh, Sweden played in the yellow, England played in red. And the other thing of note is that I was actually in Cologne on that day, but I didn't watch it in the stadium. There were no tickets there, but watched it at the cathedral, which was pretty nice. Setting uh, many, many English fans, so I sided with the Swedish guys. Um, I got, well, I respected a few English fans there. Most of them were behaving in a manner that uh, soured my perception of the English team probably until uh, this year, maybe two years ago or so on. So yeah, uh, I may tell you at some point later more about it. And then another game that was very exciting was the one in Euro 2012 in Kiev. Uh, it was what I call the perfect game. England taking the lead, 
Sweden coming back and then England turning around. Uh, great goals in that one. Unfortunately, Sweden got uh, eliminated. It was also noteworthy that Sweden played in the yellow and England had a black away jersey uh, with blue. And I think this looked actually quite good as a jersey matchup. So I really like that one. The game was great. I just wish that Sweden would have scored the equalizer. It would still be in contention because they beat France in the last game. Uh, wonderful game. I was a little bit sorry, as I said, but yeah, uh, one to remember. But you see already the pattern. Overall, Sweden has a little bit the upper hand in competitive matches, but they're always very, very tight. And the last one went to England. Now, accolades, they're not as great. England, of course, was a World Cup winner in 1966. The Cursor still doesn't want to move, so bear with me there. Uh, Sweden made the final um, World Cup in 58 on home soil, where they lost to the Great Brazil by Pelé. Um, also in the Euros, both reached the semi-finals, England twice, 68 is mostly forgotten, I think they, I want to say they lost to a coin flip against Italy, in that one and Italy moved on, it was played in Naples and in 96 of course I lost a heartbreaker to Germany where they scored an early lead, uh, conceded a quick equalizer and then it was up and down, one of the great matches. England playing in grey though, uh, never was my favorite. And we have a golden ball between those two, 1966, when they won it all, Bobby Charlton, 1986, Gary Lineker, who is now TV pundit and also conducted the draw for this year's World Cup, was the top scorer in Mexico with six goals. And I think all of them came in the last three games of the tournament, something like that. Current form, now this is a little bit misleading, I have to say. Um, we have Sweden being underdog in most of the games. Um, they, against Korea, they got uh, the result that they needed. Um, against Germany, they were really long sitting on the draw. They lost it, but still um, they were about to lose by more and were ranked outsider, so that's why they get at least a 30%. Against Mexico, a 3 nothing that is 100%. And against Switzerland, they were also outsiders winning it uh, actually quite comfortably, so that, that's why there's also a 100% rating, uh, which gives an average form of 83%. Um, this is, again, statistically speaking, what was expected from them, how, what did they get, uh, and taking also into account the result due, uh, using Asian Handicap. For England, it's a little bit more tricky, of course, Tunisia and Panama, where they were really big um, favorites. Uh, they got uh, good results to start it off. Then against Belgium, they were um, outsiders, but favorite in the Asian handicap. So um, that one did them in a little bit. Uh, I only counted half because they played with a second string team and against Colombia, yeah. If they wouldn't have made an equalizer, if they won it, it would be a much higher rating, but uh, that was technically a draw, therefore not that high, so England is at a 60%, so Sweden looks stronger, and I said it before, I really want to see how they perform against the staunch Swedish defense. Uh, that's, I think, the key matchup to watch. Quarterfinal record, let's dig back in history one more time. England, uh, let's start with Sweden, has five top eight finishes. Uh, 38, 50, 58, 94, and 2018. In 50, it was the final group stage, so it's not listed here. So they played three real quarterfinals so far. The most lopsided one in history against Cuba, 8 0. Um, they got a free pass because they were drawn against Austria, but Austria ceased to exist in 38. By the time the World Cup game, then against the USSR, 2 0 on home soil, which is, of course, now Russia. And then against Romania, a very exciting game. I remember that one. Uh, Sweden playing in white and I think Romania in red. Uh, a really exciting game. I think it was uh, Romania taking the lead, Sweden equalizing, Sweden taking the lead, and then Romania equalizing. I remember Radu Joy and Kenneth Anderson scored the goals and a long penalty shootout. Ravelli saved the last penalty and won it for Sweden. England. A little bit better, 10 top 8 finishes, but by the time Sweden had already 2, that's the first time in 1954. Um, and it's only more recently that England 
Got to pay that so from 1962, 66, 70, 82, 86, 90, 2000, 2006, and now again. And it's a very interesting pattern. They win in 66, then they lose in overtime in 70, they lose uh, to Argentina in 60, 86, the hand of God and goal. And of course, the best goal in World Cup history. Then they win one again in overtime they against Cameroon. Um, yeah, this is where the love, uh, my love for African team started with that game. I remember that one, how unfair it was. I felt that England is winning that because Cameroon was playing so much better. It's also kind of a little bit the start of me not liking England. Uh, I think it's all in that game, but this was a very, very memorable game. Uh, now looking back on it, I can of course see it a little bit more sober, but I was 12 at the time. So that's when you really get upset and stuff. Uh, 2002, they lose to Brazil uh, after being one goal up. Ronaldinho, everyone, and then 2006, they lose a dreadful game in a penalty shoe shootout where uh, the only English man making the penalty was a Canadian and all other penalties were saved by Ricardo, I think it was. But the pattern was win one, lose two. According to that, it's England's turn. I have England as a favorite at a bit more than 63%. I expect him to play in red against the yellow in Sweden. And yeah, there's a 28.3% chance that this game goes to overtime. Let me know if you can add anything of the history between those two nations. Um, it's a Northern European clash, so I think this will be an interesting one to watch. I'm looking forward to that more than to the other matchups. So let me know what you think, what your predictions are, and if there are any other facts that you would like to know. And tomorrow I'll treat you with the last preview between Russia and Croatia. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.